Welcome back to another Latilides tutorial. In this video I will show you how to make in fluid color abstract background like this. The way to make it, is very easy and simple. All it takes is a few lines and gradient colors. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any questions about this video, feel free to ask me in the comments. Okay, let's just go to Adobe Illustrator. Create a new document with RGB color mode. First of all, create the background first. Create a rectangle according to the size of the artboard using the rectangle tool. And I want to give it with this gradient color. As usual, I have provided a color palette here, and for the color code you can find it in the description. I just need to use the eyedropper tool to apply it to this rectangle. After that, just lock this rectangle. Now we will create the fluid color. First of all, create a straight line using the line segment tool. After this tool is selected, then click anywhere in the artboard to create the line. If you just do one click, then the line segment tool will open. Set the length to 100 pixels. Leave the rest by default and click OK. Open the stroke panel and set the weight to 5 points. And make it a round cap. For the stroke, I gave it a 3 tone gradient color. While this line is still selected, open the gradient panel. Or you can find it in the window menu and look for gradient. By default, the gradient panel only gives us black and white, but we need these three colors applied to this line. So we have to modify the color stop on this gradient annotator. For this white color stop, we will change it to pink. Select this color stop, then click the color picker below to sample the color. Then the black one we will change it to yellow. Do the same as before, click this color stop, then color picker, and then choose yellow. We still need two more color stops. To create a new color stop, all you have to do is hover the cursor between the two default color stops, and below the gradient annotator, until a plus sign appears on the cursor, then click on it. For this color stop I will give it a purple color, color picker, and choose purple. Set the location to 48%. Next, for the fourth color stop, give it the same pink color as the first color. Location 52%. The resulting gradient color will look like this. Now, we are going to make this little colored line wavy. Open the effects menu. Distort and transform. And click zigzag. On the zigzag panel, just set it like this. Size 3 pixels. Absolutes. Ridges segment 4 smooth points and click ok or you can adjust it as you wish but it must be with smooth points the next stage we will duplicate it in rotation reopen the effects menu distort and transform and transform you just need to change the angle to 30 degrees and copies to 5 and click ok now we have the first object move it out off the artboard because we don't need it to be in the frame Duplicate this object by holding down the ALT key on the keyboard and dragging it to the other side of the artboard. After that, increase the size. Because this is just a line and not a total of 6 lines, so we can't resize it directly by using a bounding box, because basically it doesn't have a bounding box. It's different if we have expanded it. For example, I duplicated it and expanded it. Because after we expand it, it will turn into several lines in one group, and this bounding box automatically appears. Here we can resize it easily. But this time, I'm not going to expand it and keep the transform effect stay there, so that later we can change it again as well as the zigzag effect. Actually, you can just expand it, but I just want to show you how Adobe Illustrator works in another way. So, to be able to resize it, we have go to the properties panel. Or if you don't have it like I have, then you can open it in the window menu and look for properties. Here, you can change the width only, while the height cannot be changed, because there is nothing that can be changed there. Remember, this is just a horizontal line, or a straight line path, which definitely has no height, so we can only change the width value. Change the width to 1000 pixels. Alternatively, you can go to the control panel overview, and you can change it from here too. What happens here, is that when we change the length of this line, the zigzag effect we had before doesn't change at all. 
We can see here that the first object before we resize it has a bigger curvature, while the object that has been resized has less curvature. It means that we only resize the object, while we haven't enlarged the zigzag effect. We can check it in the appearance panel. You can find this appearance panel in the window menu and look for appearance. Here we can see some of the effects we have given to this straight line. First and foremost there is a zigzag effect. There is also information about stroke and fill, which we previously gave a gradient color to the stroke, and 5 points to its weight, then fill in none. And the second effect is the transform effect. If you look at the FX code on the right here then it's an effect we've added to an object. If you click on this zigzag effect then a zigzag panel will appear. Here we can see the settings we made earlier. Just like we set before, the size is 3 pixels, absolute, 4 segments, and the points are smooth. And we just need to resize it to 50 pixels and leave everything else as it is. And click OK. Change the stroke weight to 10 points. You can see the result significantly. We continue again by uniting these two objects with the Blend tool. Double click on the Blend tool to open the Blend Options panel. Set the spacing to specified distance. And give it a value of 2 pixels. Because 2 pixels is enough. And click OK. Now move the cursor to the first object, until an asterisk appears on the cursor. The asterisk on the cursor indicates that the object clicked with the asterisk is the first object. Once clicked, go to the next object. And here the cursor that has an asterisk is now changed to a plus sign. That means we're going to add a second object to blend. And just click it. And we have a finely blended object. Now we just need to make the blend path wavy. For that we have to make a wavy path first. Create wavy lines using the curve tool. Start by creating a small wave at the beginning, and a larger wave at the end. Or you can also create another model path. Once the path is complete, select everything, this line and the blended object. Then go to the object menu. Blends. Replace spine. And here we are. We've created a fluid color like this. Finally I want to modify it a little more to give a different visual impression. Right click on this fluid color. And click, isolate selected group. Or more simply you just need to double click on it, to perform the same function. Select this first object. Right click. Arrange. And, bring to front. And it will give a different visual impression than before. Finally we have finished creating this fluid color very easily. The rest you can experiment with using other shapes and colors using this technique. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. And finally, if this video is useful, please subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next video.